welcome to our fifth video on our Chem 1 unit for Year 10 Science. In this video, we'll just be looking at an introduction to chemical equations, and then we'll have another video which starts looking at how we balance chemical equations. Okay, so let's have a think about what chemical equations are. And before we can go there, what we need to think about is what a chemical reaction is. Okay, so in a chemical reaction, we've got two or more um, compounds or elements reacting together to make new compounds or elements. Okay, so we'll look into that further. But before we can do anything with that, we need to be able to know the terminology involved and what notation is involved to ensure that our chemical reactions are correct and our chemical or our chemical equations are correct representing that chemical reaction that's occurring. Okay, so what is a chemical equation? Okay, and it's a summary of what's occurred in our chemical reaction. Now, let's think about it. If we're cooking, we have ingredients. Okay, so for example, we might have an egg, flour, and milk. We're going to be making pancakes. Okay, so we've got egg, flour, milk, and we mix them together, fry them up, we get pancakes. All right, so chemical reactions, that is a chemical reaction. So chemical reactions in the lab are the same. We have ingredients, and then we have a product. Okay. But in the case of our chemical reactions, we call them reactants, which are our ingredients, and products, which are our outcome. Now, for example, if we've got water, we've got hydrogen and oxygen. So we know water's H2O, so we've got two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom, and they react together, and their product, what they create, is water. So that's shown here. We've got two hydrogens at H2 and our oxygen and our what we make is water. Okay, so our ingredients are hydrogen and oxygen or our reactants are hydrogen and oxygen and water H2O is our product. So this equation we've got here is telling us quite a lot. It's telling us how many atoms of each of the elements we've got. So it's telling us we've got two hydrogens, one oxygen. It's telling us we add them together. And the arrow tells us what our product is. It's telling us that a reaction has taken place. Okay, so as I've already said, the reactants are the things that are to the left of the arrow. They're the initial substances that react together to form the products. Reactants can sometimes be reagents. And what is made, the outcome of that reaction, is what we call our products. Put together the reactants, the arrow, and the products, and we get our chemical reaction. Okay, so these chemical changes can occur and they can be um, expressed in a general form. Okay, so the number of reactants and products may change from one equation to another, but the general format is always the same. Okay, now we've got two different ways of writing this. We've got what we call our word equation. Okay, and that's where we actually write the actual names of our reactants and our products. Okay, and then we place an arrow in the same as we would if we're using the symbols, but we're just using words in this case. So you can see your word equation at the top here for our reaction of methane and oxygen. Okay, so that's a combustion reaction. You can see your reactants, and they are written in the word equation, methane plus oxygen. Okay, we've got the arrow saying that the reaction took place, and then we've got our carbon dioxide and water on the right-hand side, and they're our products. Okay, we always have a plus and we always have an arrow in a chemical reaction, but we never have a minus, okay? So the plus basically means reactant A and reactant B were being added together. The arrow means moving from the reactants to the product. That's the chemical reaction, what is formed. 
Okay, so having a look again, we've got magnesium and oxygen this time, and they are forming magnesium oxide. You'll see below that we've got what we call the chemical equation, and this is balanced. Okay, symbols of state. Now, sometimes when we do a chemical reaction, we actually need to show whether the reactants or products are solids, liquids, gases, or aqueous. Okay, so sometimes we'll write small letters in subscript to show this. Okay, so solid being a lowercase s, liquid being lowercase l, gas being a lowercase g, and aqueous being lowercase, lowercase aq. If you ever see those next to um, any symbols in a chemical reaction, that's what it means. So lowercase s means the reactant or the product is solid. Lowercase l would mean the reactant or the product was liquid. Just remembering that the aq means aqu aqueous. Okay, so that's how you would see it in that example column there. All right, so we've looked at those word equations. Okay, so using the words, but still having the arrow and the plus. Okay, so here we've got two examples. We've got our word equation and our chemical equation. Okay, so this is photosynthesis. So you can see the word equation on the bottom chemical equation on the top and that's a nice balanced chemical equation there. We'll look at balancing equations in the next video so don't worry about that at the moment. Here we've got the formation of two water molecules. This is an interesting one that we'll look further into and this is actually just looking at how we balance equations but the top we've got our symbol equation okay our chemical equation there using our symbol. I will see you in the next video where we take this one step further to start looking at balancing equations.